Next, we're going to have Maria Napolitano, Turnberry Reserve. Everybody should know that one. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Maria Napolitano. I'm a resident of Turnberry Reserve. I have been for the past 14 years. I love my community. I want to start off by saying I have no issue with HOA, the rules, the regulations. Our issues lie within the corrupt system and the corrupt CAM that we are working with. Our CAM is licensed by the DBPR. Her file with them is over 2,200 pages and she still holds a license. There's money missing, there's fraudulent activities, it's just running rampant throughout our community. What you have there that I just handed you is just a small piece of what we deal with within our community. The yellow ribbon that you see here, this is our cry for help. This is our sign of unity. You're gonna start seeing them on the mailboxes throughout our community. This is our residents saying enough is enough. We've gone to the DBPR, they have not helped us at all. She still holds a license. She still continues to steal money from us. Um, again, a lot of fraudulent activity. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous right now. I apologize for that. The travesty that just happened was on November 7th. Um, we haven't had an election in seven years. We finally had our first election in seven years, and Sherry Raposo, who is a licensed CAM of our community, and the HOA attorney, Peter McGrath, stole the election from us. They stole it. So now we have to go back to the DBPR, file an election dispute, and we're in the same boat again because we have to wait and wait. And this is time consuming. In the meanwhile, we've made requests for financials. We've made requests for documents. This CAM refuses to produce a single piece of paper. We formally requested. We have sent certified letters. We've requested to the attorney, we get nothing. There is no transparency. They stole this election from us on November 7th because the CAM went in and backdated late fees, interest, and illegally issued fines on the residents' accounts. This suspended the voting rights. Therefore, they, um, we did not meet quorum according to them. We had a majority vote. They instructed the board and the slate of candidates that they put up not to attend the meeting. Not one of them showed up. Therefore, there was no quorum. Even if we were all suspended without the board there, we had no quorum. And we lost our, we didn't lose our election. We won our election. We won our election. They stole it from us. So now we're still fighting and battling. We're in legal battles right now coming out of our own pockets because we don't have the HOA funds to fight. So we're stuck. Where do we go? I mean, I pose this question to you. What are our options now? We're residents, we're hardworking, and we just need a resolution to this, and we need it quickly. Does that mean I need to stop? Um, I mean, I think, you know, if we can bring it down to a local level where we're in extreme circumstances that we can file locally with state oversight if need be, but do something local within the local government that can help us remedy these situations. We're not the only community. This is an epidemic throughout the state of Florida. There's tons of uh, rogue association managers. They control everything, they control the finances, and we have, we're out of options. We're really out of options here, and we don't know where to turn any longer. So I pose that question to you. Where do we go now? What do we do? Er, sorry, question just for clarification. Um, I'm looking at an email now from, uh, from DBPR. Um, just for confirmation, I have an email saying that they're still investigating the case. Is that 
Is that the case or yes, is not? there are several investigations still open, one being mine, um, but there are many that were closed, unfounded. A slap on the wrist is all she's gotten. If you don't mind, she still holds a license. If you don't mind divulging, um, what was the accusation of your case? My case had to do with several, um, several different things. Mm -hmm. One was requesting the financials, mm -hmm. and they did not produce. And I followed statute. I did the certified letter, waited my 10 business days, got nothing in return. So I filed my complaint. They, I prepay my assessments. So um, with that being said, uh, the CAM has been issuing illegal fines. Mm -hmm. So they took. $600 of my prepaid assessments, applied it to fines that were issued illegally without the proper um, channels being followed to issue the fines. And then after that, they did a bogus CEC meeting and then issued another $1,470 on top of the 600 that they already stole from me. And you know, again, the list goes on and on. And all, the, and, and I'm I'm trying to get to to the meat of it, which is that there you have a an open case with the DVPR. Is this is all of this what you just explained updated yes, with it's them? It's all in the it's all in my case. And then they she just recently went in, and I have all my ledgers showing every month where I have a credit, 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 credit. After I filed my complaint with the DVPR, mm -hmm. I was targeted, mm -hmm. and then they went in and backdated. The fines. Then on November 4th, they went in and she added back two years of late fees, interest, and fines that were not there in June, July, or August. And I have documentation. And, and I know that you've been in communication with, with my office and we've been following what's, what's been happening. Yes. Um, but, but I will certainly um, talk with DBPR and the appropriate folks within. Um, to see if we can get an expedited update on, on what's actually happening. Some may be held back um, for, um, for certain reasons, because there's an open investigation. Many times things are not made public. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, but okay. we'll certainly look to well, get we you just answers. We need it expedited, because while we're waiting for them to do something, our money is going away. Mm -hmm. We have no control in our community. We have no transparency. We mm -hmm. have nothing. No, I understand. And, and, if, and if things are still abused and there becomes a criminal case, I think that opens, and I'm not suggesting that there is because I don't know all the facts, uh, but that obviously opens up a whole uh, different avenue of, of, of options. But um, um, no, thank you, and, and I, I just appreciate the clarification. Thank you. That's it. Thank you again, Mr. Napolitano, for being here before us. Um, what is the pot, what's the how many units in your in your we community? We have 373 single family homes. And it's completely filled? Yes. And they all belong to the HOA as um, part of the their the members, yeah. They're I mean, all members. Mm -hmm, yes. And do they attend the meetings uh, that when you they must, have them when they have them? Um, they had one in January, one in June. And then they just had one recently because they were forced to with all the litigation going on. I see. So we're supposed to hold monthly meetings. Uh, my, my next question to you is, has any, has any uh, attorney said to you, well, put it in escrow, your, your HOA funds, until you settle this? I mean, do you know, would, did you ever get an avenue of doing that? Um, not for putting our funds in escrow. I think that's a great idea, and it's definitely something, you know, that should absolutely be done. Um, you know, we just have to see how to go about that. Well, I, you know, my point is that if you put it in an escrow, it's not that you're not paying. You'll just let the courts see that you are maintaining your, uh, paying your dues uh, as part of a homeowner, but also the question that you have that the usage of that money um, uh, illegally, possibly, uh, with criminal acts, it means that um, you safeguard what you're putting into it, but you don't want to lose it. And, um, but thank you again for coming before us. Thank you. Thank you. Question. So, sorry, and, and this is by nope. partly investigative. Go ahead. Um, is, is there been a court complaint on this? Has there There's two cases right now. With, with DBPR, though. Oh, right? with DBPR? Yeah. No, 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 with DBPR, but is there an actual civil court case? 
that's been filed against By the HOA? DBPR? No, 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 from the owners? Oh, yes. Or yourself? Yes. There has we, been. Well, initially, when we first started speaking up, the CAM instructed the board to sign off and the HOA attorney on a case against seven of us who were speaking up, who were trying to become part of the board. So they hit us with a cease and desist and then a lawsuit that's still open in the, in the uh, courts. We filed one against the management company, the manager, and the three board members at the time um, just to try to get our annual meeting on the books, which we did, and unfortunately they stole the meeting from us. And has a judge heard that case? Um, yes, yeah, she did hear the first part of it because we filed an emergency injunction. Right. Um, she dismissed the emergency injunction. However, she did not, thankfully, dismiss our lawsuit. And funds were not uh, ordered to go into escrow? No. And that's the dispute of the case. I don't know. I haven't read the case. but Yeah. Well, that wasn't the, the dispute. Like our case that we filed against them primarily had to do with in, enjoining the manager, the management company, and the board from our annual election. So they would not corrupt it, and it happened anyway. I understand. So we're out of options. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I you know we've talked a lot. I just wanted to ask you a question. Are you aware of any local government interest in exploring increased HOA oversight options for you? Absolutely. I mean, I've had conversation with, I think Peggy Chowdhury is here. She's in the back. I've had conversation with her about it. There's different things I know and different options. If we can take it to a local level, then, um, you know, the hope is that we can move things along quicker and not have it so delayed and so many different processes that kind of confuse everything. So we need, you know, quicker, easier, more localized remedies for us when it comes to things of this extreme. So. Could I ask the commissioner to, to come up a minute? Well, Chairman, I, I just I, I don't I don't know the proper uh, procedure yeah. to request this. Uh, but can this delegation get further clarification on whether um, a local home rule local home rule authority allows uh, local governments to have a higher level of um, restrictions or or regulations on HOAs? Uh, I, I don't know that that's clear. Well, I, I ha to get to answer your question, I have a I have a bill. With, with I'm not talking about Bill. I'm, I'm talking about can can we as a delegation get that so that there's we clear the air to understand what local governments can and cannot do. I can't answer that question. I have to look. I have to investigate. I have to look into that because I definitely want to look into that. Okay. I need clarification on that too. Okay. And I so I think that should be something with the delegation moving forward is that we uh, we should try to get that answered. Uh, and, and report back to whomever you know we believe you know needs it within whether there's the two cities in the county uh, within Osceola County. Um, if I may, Representative Larosa, yes, um, any cry that we or for help that we've done to local government, it's always referred back to the state. Mm -hmm. We've tried local. We've tried it's state. A, it's We're, a it's a state regulated. Um, right, but entity, 720. Under statute. But but I don't know that 720 says you cannot do this. Like, that, that's what I'm trying to get to, saying is where are the limitations of the, of the statute? Um, I'm not an attorney. I, I, I can't answer that. On that one. But, um, yeah. I okay. mean, the issue with 720, again, there is no enforcement. There's no oversight for it. it the, you know, the statute is violated on a daily basis in our community, and who do we go to? Right. Well, that's, and that's maybe that can help clarify that. Okay. I, I think HOAs are very different. This is why I'm saying this. I don't believe that HOAs in the Panhandle and in Jacksonville and in Central same. Florida and South Florida are, are the same. I think we have unique uh, problems regionally. And if something needs to happen here locally and our local governments can step up and, and offer some type of solution, um, uh, so let it be. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking for clarity over. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very well, much. The only thing I wanted to ask the commissioner of uh, of the Osceola County, she had anything she would like to say about working with HOAs and, and trying to get some kind of, and I know uh, Commissioner Hawkins is here too, and he's uh, seen it firsthand in Turnberry of what they've done to him, so if they can uh, give their two cents. Can I step down? You can stay there. Stay here? Just stay to the side. Um, yes, thank you. Um, well, 
firsthand when you say what we've seen on the local level, at least what I've seen in speaking to residents, not just in Turnberry, but also other HOAs, is the issue of um, transparency when it comes to requesting documents for budgeting. I know in my HOA, every month we have meetings and we see exactly the expenditures, the ins and the outs, and so we know exactly where our money is going. In this case, as you heard um, Maria speak and say that they have not been able to have that opportunity, and that simple matter has caused all of these other issues, which the transparency was the biggest problem. Um, I can only speak as a sole board member of my five-member board, but I can tell you that I would be in support of any efforts trying to help the people in our county because this has been consistent since I've taken office in 2016. Um, and I, I'm not really sure what can we do because to your point, Representative LaRosa, of course, we've got to investigate and see what can we do. But in the meantime, just keeping in mind that the residents are suffering every single day. There's people that are losing their homes, people that are requesting uh, fees and fines that perhaps don't even apply to them, but they have to pay it anyway, as you heard Maria speak. And so for me, I'm just like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And in Turnberry's case, with everything happening, I'm very surprised that maybe we can't even go to, maybe the governor requests for this to be um, to be looked at and, and uh, like immediately because the people in Turnberry are suffering from it a lot. But again, overall HOAs need a solution. And I would be in support of whatever this body um, tries to bring forward to Tallahassee to try to get some efforts uh, done. And uh, of course, I'm only on the local level. And again, I can only speak as my, uh, for myself as a sole board member, but we have a great Commissioner Hawkins, which represents the district that could describe more and speak more to this. Sounds like we're going to make this a county commission meeting here real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, and uh, thank you all for being here. Good morning. Um, I have experienced and worked with this lady here quite a bit yes. uh, for what's going on. It's a, it's a fine line. Representative LaRosa, I think you're correct. Generally, HOAs work how they're supposed to, and that's why it's at the state, and one's in the panhandle, and South Florida, you know, they resolve issues through the, the board and the uh, procedures that are in place. This management company has a history, uh, not only in Osceola County now for the last seven, eight years, but also in Seminole County where court cases have been filed. And it's a thin line and how I've gotten involved is when a management company tries to enforce uh, traffic laws and trespassing laws and we all know that only the sheriff or deputies of the sheriff can uh, do that so they're placing these fines on people trespassing them from their own facilities shutting the portal down so they cannot pay their fines when you know even if it is a legitimate fine uh, to keep them from paying so they don't have voting rights when it comes to that that's where the line probably needs to be drawn. Maybe the civil courts have more leeway to hear that because that's what the judge said. Her, she was so limited in what she could do uh, to help them. And I think she understood it and the evidence was there in front of her, but she was limited and it had to go to the, um, through the proper channels that uh, the state has right now. So I don't know how we reform that, uh, how we look at that, but the problem is these fines are happening daily to people. They're being backdated. Uh, so the procedures to take and get through that process are just too long for what's happening to a community like this. The escrow is, I can tell you, a wonderful idea, Agreed. but at the end of the day, unless it's court ordered, she's going to fine them for not paying and putting it in an escrow account. Take um, the house. You know, there's, there's a lot going on here and a lot of evidence, but it needs to be presented through the proper channels through FDLE and the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. And now's not the time to hear what all we have, but this is a mess, and uh, the residents of Turnberry are probably going to be the test case, and I've told them that for what action the state may do and change on this. Yeah. Chairman, just a quick comment, um, and thank you. I think you, you put, it, put it a certain way. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound like there's a bylaws issue. It sounds like there's a violation mm -hmm. of the bylaws, which mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, you know, a, a bad player, uh, which is registered and regulated by the state of Florida that yes. being the management company. Yes. And, and if something happens, you're saying it happens in Seminole County and, and other, other places, I think that's where there should be a tip off to say, hey, hold on a second. Um, just like in all other, you know, 70 some odd regulated industries in the state of Florida, if you abuse something, then you get flagged and, mm -hmm. and you, should not, um, you should not be able to put the, uh, the community at harm. That's, that's what consumer protection is. And that's why these industries are ultimately regulated. So I, I think the answer, we can talk about 720, we can talk about 718 and how we're going to make these things work, but every community is different. I think the answer falls within the, regula the regulatory structure of what we require HOA managers to do. Um, 
years ago we we strengthened the requirement for for board members yep. right it required them to do certain things that that should have been no brainer should have been things that they did anyways right reading their bylaws acknowledging that taking classes um if, if we make those simple requirements of board members why aren't community association managers held to a much higher standard they have a fiduciary relationship uh, with all of the homeowners handling their financials making sure things are transparent and I think that's where the that's what we need to point to and say all right if these things are violated multiple times and it and it's received by DBPR something then should ultimately take place maybe it's an immediate cease and desist of this management company maybe it's in the bring a receiver or bring in some other entity uh, to, to do something about it um, but but, I, but that's why I keep on asking the question saying what is truly the problem because I guarantee you Terrenberry reserves and the community next to it and the community across the street all have different bylaws uh, but could have similar issues and it's not the bylaws it's the people running it yeah. our bylaws are not an issue as i said in the beginning right. i don't have an issue with hoa we don't have issues with the rules the bylaws the covenants none of it it's the enforcement of it and then the oversight of who do we go to when we run into this situation right. but, but that's what 720 does 720 sets up the, the the parameters of how to create bylaws for for a, an association for a community mm -hmm. um and we keep on focusing there i truly believe the issue falls within the managers Representative Lewis, so what I would add to that is the responsibility of somebody that puts their name in the hat to be elected to an HOA board, I think they need to know that that comes with a responsibility that also can be held accountable for. Sure. That's what we're really lacking here is yeah. they, they think that the blame is going to go on the management company, but they don't realize their vote and that responsibility they have, just like all of us. We take an oath and we have a responsibility to people. They have a responsibility to represent the citizens of that community and not represent the management company. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Anytime you, you choose to represent somebody, you, you automatically should be held to a higher standard. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you all for I just want to say, um, uh, I just talked to the <laughs> supervising judge today about, I said maybe you can add an HOA court, and he gave me some other idea that I want to talk to him about. I'm going to talk to him about that. And then I talked to the county manager, came up with an idea, and somebody else came up with an idea. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with these ideas, and I'll let you know what's going on and let you folks know. And work with the county, and see what we can, we can do, and uh, work with my representatives here, and my senator, and see what we can do because we have some good ideas, especially the escrow thing, which was pretty good. But the only thing I'm going to say about the escrow thing is then they do like they do in Poinciana. They'll hold you guys hold your money, but then they come and give you fine, fine, fines, put a lien on your house, and then take your house, and then you're out of a house. So I don't want that to happen. So There's we'll see what we can do. Right yeah. So things reasons. like that we want to work for. So. I don't want you to think that we forgot about you. You know, I always talk to you and I ask you questions and the commissioner's doing his great, great job in, in helping me out there. So I want to thank you all and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.